What's going on everyone? So first and foremost, Carlos, I wanted to say thank you very much for having me on your channel. Uh, Mrs. Pond, this is something that I have been looking forward to do with you for quite some time. Obviously, if you're watching this on this channel, you might not know much about my channel, but obviously if you're watching this on my channel, you already know this, so bear with me. This is part of a series where I focus on a specific director and rank that director's work from worst to best. I've done director lists in the past, such as Wes Anderson, David Lynch, David Fincher, so you can check that playlist on my channel down below. But anyways, again, Carlos and I are focusing this time on Alejandro Gonzalez in our two's films. He's done six films, so we're going to be ranking them from worst to best. Obviously, this is not going to include any music videos, short films, um, or TV shows. None of that, just specifically the films. So he's done six. Six is going to be his worst, one being his best, and of course, our viewpoints. So kicking things off with number six is Beautiful, which stars Javier Bardem. Uh, two minutes shy of two and a half hours. I unfortunately felt the length. This is definitely a mixed bag of a film. Has its fair share of positives, but overall I felt like it was something that I'm glad I saw, just so I can now say that I've seen every NR2 film, but uh, besides that, I don't think I'll revisit this movie anytime soon. But again, I understand why a lot of people like this movie. You go on Letterboxd, you see a lot of people really appreciate this, especially in the film community. Um, I just was left cold, unfortunately. Um, so that's my number six. My number five is uh, 21 Grams, which I haven't seen in like four years, truth be told. Um, but from what I remember, I think it was quite solid. Um, and I think it's partially because I'm kind of biased. I like movies such as like Boogie Nights, Magnolia, Pulp Fiction. I like those big ensemble casts where their characters are some way, shape, or form interwoven. Um, at least at some point in time. Not necessarily all the characters' lives are interwoven, but you still are focusing on all these characters and you see their lives and what they're going through. And that to me is very intriguing. I think 21 Grams is one of the lesser intriguing versions of all these movies, but it's still nonetheless intriguing. I mean, you get to see Benicio Del Toro give a really good performance, same with Sean Penn and Naomi Watts. Um, there's not really much to hate on with this movie, at least when I saw it. I am looking to possibly rewatch it at some point soon, but for now, I thought it was solid. It was a fine film. That's why it's my number five. Um, so next up, number four is uh, Battle, which I know a lot of people that love this movie. I think it's very similar, honestly, to 21 Grams, and it's actually part of an unofficial trilogy of NR2. Um, similar to 21 Grams, it's focusing on a bunch of different characters, as there's, like, in this case, a specific event that leads uh, several characters. Now, this got a lot of Oscar attention, and... I think I can see why everyone gives great performances, no doubt about it. It's well shot. But something about it, whilst I like it better than 21 Grams, no doubt about it, there just was something missing. I don't know if it was necessarily the fact that the story was kind of like 21 Grams, where it was a lesser interesting version of Boogie Nights and Magnolia and movies like that. Or maybe it was just that the characters weren't as surprisingly fleshed out as you might see in like, you know, in our two's other movies. I don't know what the case was, but I will say this off the bat, 21 Grams, similar to that movie, I think that Babel's a movie I want to rewatch. Um, it's definitely a movie though that if someone says like, hey, I really like that movie, I'm not going to sit here and hate on it because I, I guess I can see why people would really like this movie. I just personally think it's just solid. So my number six film from Inaritu is... Twenty one grams. So let me preface this list by saying that I think every single one of these films are really great. Um, there's not a single film in this list that I think is below a seven. They're all at least very strong sevens or above that. And twenty one grams, even though it's at the bottom of this list, is a really ambitious and incredibly well made film. It's the second film he made that is part of what is nicknamed the Death Trilogy. Um, the Death Trilogy being Amores Perros, 21 Grams, and Babel. And I think it's just called the Death Trilogy because um, all of those films kind of have that different stories happening in different places that all connect. But they're also really kind of dreary and a lot of the times can be full of despair. So I'm not sure if that's why they call it, but that's just kind of what I'm assuming. Either way, um, as I said... This film is really ambitious because this takes that kind of story that he's done three times already where you have these different stories happening and they all connect at some point. But this one is 
more scattered than the others. Um, this one is feels a lot more kind of like a jigsaw puzzle at times to where, honestly, for like the first hour of this film, you have a lot of scenes and quick flashes of certain contexts happening, but you don't really know how it all connects. You don't really even understand the current context that it's showing because it's a film that wants to reveal everything that's happening and reveal its secrets as the film progresses and kind of forces the audience to wait it out until everything starts coming together. And I can understand that that can be a really frustrating thing for a lot of viewers because you want something more to chew on, you know, for the first 40 minutes of this film. But for me, it didn't really bother me that much because I was still really invested and just really intrigued by all of these flashes that he was showing. And especially once you wait to what this film progresses into, I think it builds up to something that's really intense, really incredible, and obviously thematic. All of his films are incredibly thematic. All the performances in this film are incredible. That pretty much goes for every single Inyaritu film. The performances that are in his films and what he's able to bring out of certain actors and actresses is quite incredible. And that's the case with 21 Grams, Naomi Watts, Sean Penn, Benito Del Toro, all give fantastic performances in this film. There are really gut-wrenching moments in this film where they really have to take a lot out of them to really convey, and I think they all really knocked it out of the park. And again, I think my only real issues with this film is that it is a little bit too scattershot to the point where it seems, at some points, especially like in the first half, it seems a bit random in which scenes that he's putting ahead and before certain ones. And that's probably, that was probably his goal, but um, for me, it seemed uh, just a little bit too demanding for the audience. And also, um, there are some kind of emotional moments in this film that I don't think worked entirely the way he wanted to. If I were to give this film a rating, I would definitely give it a very strong 7 out of 10. And I still highly recommend to check it out if you haven't yet, because I definitely think it's worth your time. So at number 5, we have... Beautiful, that stars Javier Bardem in the lead role. So Beautiful was a film that I actually hadn't seen up until this point. This was a film that I actually had to view in preparation for this list because all the other ones I've seen a lot of different times. This one I have yet to see because I didn't really hear that much about this film. I don't really hear people talking about this film. So needless to say, I was still pretty excited to dive into this film because I have a strong confidence in, in, in Yaritu as a filmmaker that um, even though people don't talk about it, I still had high hopes for it. And obviously, I really enjoyed it because this basically still shows and showcases all of the talent that Inyaritu has as a filmmaker because obviously this isn't like the Death Trilogy to where there's a lot of different stories happening. This, this is a film that chooses a specific main character, which is obviously played by Javier Bardem. And he's a character that at least I think what this film is trying to demonstrate for the most part is incredibly selfless and even though he lives a really complicated and um, at times really dreadful life, um, he's somebody that continues to try to do good and thinks about a lot of other people besides himself. But what really caught me off guard in this film is that there's actually this element of horror to it. And I would actually really love to see Inyardi to make a horror film at some point because the glimpses of this kind of supernatural horror that's in this film, I thought was really effective and um, definitely got some sort of reaction out of me. I mean, don't go into this film thinking there's a lot of it because it's used incredibly sparingly. Um, this, and when it is used, you know, it doesn't linger on it too long at all. It's very, again, it's really sparse. It's incredibly subtle with it. It doesn't hit you over the head with it at all. But when it's there, um, it's moments that it's kind of creepy and it's actually quite effective. But, you know, besides that, this film also has two opening scenes where, one, you just completely don't understand it until it's revealed in the end, until it actually comes back to it. And the other one kind of subverts your expectation in terms of what you thought it meant and what it was going for. And then when it gets revealed later, the, the actual context of what was happening, it's a lot more innocent and beautiful um, than what you were first expecting. And I really like that aspect of this film as well. And Javier Bardem in this film is absolutely brilliant. Um, this is arguably one of the better performances in one of Inyaritu's films 
And it's hard to say because, I mean, you have Michael Keaton, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, up there on the top. But this is arguably one of the best ones because he's incredible in this film. He really, um, he, he really elevates this film to a whole new level and makes it a lot more convincing and a lot more attachable. And it's the little nuances in this film, the little details and how he acts and portrays his character that makes it all the more immersive and emotional. But in terms of criticisms, I will say that I do think this film is too long. I think you could have, you know, cut this down to just a two hour film because it's two hours and 30 minutes, essentially. I think this could have easily been a two hour film. And really, I don't think any of the power of it would have been lost. So that's one criticism I have with it. I also think that some, kind of like 21 Grams, there are some moments that I think are trying to be really, really emotional and don't really strike the chord that it's going for. So I kind of had that similar criticism with this film. But overall, I was really impressed by it. And I do think that this is a wonderful and beautiful film. So at number four, we have... The Revenant, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. So this is a film that... I remember being so hyped and amped for because at this point I had already loved a lot of what Inyarditu has made and I was just going into this film with such high expectations and I remember being in that theater with my cousin Eric and my partner Jen when the opening scene started happening it's like I was just sitting there just like this is this is real life this is actually happening that's how excited I was for this film and even though I went in with such incredibly high expectations, this film still rocked my world and it did not let me down at all. I remember after seeing this film, I was kind of drooling all over it and telling everybody how great it was. And a lot of my Kino Lord friends uh, were telling me that, you know, it's good, but it's really not. I don't think it's as fantastic as you're making it out to be. I still highly disagree. I think this film is not a masterpiece but it's damn close to one because the cinematography is some of the most breathtaking cinematography i've ever seen emmanuel lubeski obviously pretty much at least the, at the very least top three uh best cinematographers we have today and i just love the camera work in this film the the framing and the fluid movements in this film is just it's it's mwah, it's that's what I look forward to when I want to go and experience an actual film. Leonardo DiCaprio is obviously amazing in this film. And I was really happy to see him win an award for this, finally win an Oscar for his performance. Um, it's sad that he had to open up an animal carcass and dive in there naked in order for the Academy to recognize him. But nevertheless, I'm happy he got one. Tom Hardy's really fantastic in this film too. You might not understand half the shit he's saying, but he's really, really good at embodying his character and also think he was snubbed of an award too in that oscar season i think like mark rylance for bridge of spies one no one talks about that no one really gives a shit and i also love the way that native americans are portrayed in this film and i like how this film dives in to the kind of harsh reality of capitalism and the type of consequences that had on native americans and their land so i really enjoyed this film a lot obviously i still think it's a fantastic film despite people uh, saying, you know, it was underwhelming and really didn't hold up. This film came after Birdman, so I think it's an excellent follow-up to a film that a lot of people consider to be one of the best films ever made. Now we're getting into NRT's top three. And it's top three, I think they're all good to great. So number three is a film that I feel like a lot of people would have as their one or two. Um, number three is Amores Peros. Um, I think I butchered that. I apologize. But this is a movie that you know, it's part of the trilogy of Babel and 21 Grams. Um, and this is the one that came before 21 Grams and Babel. And I think it's also one of the reasons why I didn't like Babel and 21 Grams as much. Because Amoris Perros has imagery that you will probably never forget. Um, you know, it's for that very reason as to why it's wrenched into my brain. 21 Grams and Babel, not so much. And Morris Burroughs also is, of those three, the one I want to come back to several more times. I've only seen it once, but I do want to come back to it several times because I feel like that is definitely a movie that you go and watch over and over again, you'll get a lot out of it. At least I personally think, and that's again a film that I saw four years ago, but trust me, it's hard to forget about that movie. It really is. Very well done. But yeah, that's my number three. So next up, my number two is The Revenant. 
Now I'm sure some of you guys have this uh, lower down on the list, which I think is a shame because I think The Revenant is a great film. Never forget when I saw this in theaters five years ago, it was truly captivating to say the least. Um, I was invested in the story and characters, something that, you know, some of NR2's other films, I can't really say that I felt that way, but this time around, I gotta say The Revenant I think is the perfect blend of incredible style and substance because I did get a lot out of this movie. I definitely did. I like the time period it also focuses on and I think that it's very detail oriented. And you know, in our two style, as I already mentioned, being great in this film, but I think it's also because he was very stubborn with wanting to use pretty much all natural lighting and minimalizing the CGI. Now CGI, again, as I mentioned in other videos, I don't think it's bad. I think that if it's something that is used very well, then it's a tool like anything else. And I think this movie, when it has CGI, it's great because you can't really tell what is or isn't. And those are the best type of filmmakers that are able to do that. And my goodness, R2 was able to do that. Um, but yeah, I could talk all day about The Revenant. It's, what can I say, a great film. That's why it's my number two. Next up, you probably already know, uh, based on, you know, elimination, but my number one, my favorite number two film, and in my opinion, is magnum opus, Birdman, or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance. I love this film, man. This is, it's what it's all about in terms of just watching a masterpiece. You watch this film, everything works. There's not a single thing in this movie where I'm able to say, that doesn't work. That's something that, you know, is a nitpick. I have no nitpicks, I have no criticisms with this movie at all. It is essentially a filmmaker's wet dream. I mean, it, it, it has everything that you want. It has long takes, it's got a score that is very much so like in tempo with the characters. You feel that propulsion of the pacing and how it's always feeling as if like you're these characters always moving. Um, and the dialogue is very snappy too, and it's also hilarious. Um, and I also really think that the themes and messages are strong, very well in tuned um, with everything that's going on. And crazy enough, you know, six years after this came out, it's more relevant than ever. And I think that's something that I think will also stick with me, that I think this is a movie that's going to age like a fine wine. That's why I said it's his magnum opus, because everything that, you know, I've criticized in terms of like his other movies, earlier movies, he perfected. You know, there's no characters or storytelling methods in this movie that feel like it's a gimmick or that it's overall not really fleshed out. And that's something that is probably the biggest positive I can say about him as a filmmaker. He's grown. Um, but yeah, this is this is my number one. I love this movie. And I know Carlos does too. But um, yeah, that's my number one. So at number three, we have... Babel, which is a film that actually has quite a bit of stars in it. It's got Brad Pitt. Kate Blanchett and Gael Garcia Bernal, which is an actor that is in a lot of my favorite films, apparently. But, um, believe it or not, Babel was actually the very first Inyaritu film that I've ever seen. I remember seeing this film back when I was in middle school. I know I probably shouldn't have been seeing this film in middle school, but whatever. Um, and I remember being extremely intrigued by this film and kind of moved in a way because at the time I had never seen a film that was put together like this before. I remember thinking that this was such a unique experience that I'm having right now. And after that, I hadn't seen it in a very long time. And I think like three or four years later, when I chose to rewatch it, the staying power was still very much there. And I was able to appreciate it even more just from the fact that I think I've matured a lot more as a person. I also think this is one of those films that is a bit underappreciated and is usually put like at the bottom of a lot of Inyaritu's films. But to me, this is top three material. The musical score in this film, the soundtrack, I think is incredible and honestly might be my favorite use of music in any of his films. Um, especially when it comes to the ending, I think that song that is used during the conclusion of this film is just absolutely beautiful and most of the time will just move me to tears. And obviously all the performances in this film are absolutely fantastic. This is one of my favorite Brad Pitt performances I've ever seen. And the only reason why I'm not saying like it, it is the best is because he's not really in this film as much as I kind of wanted to see him in it. But when he's in it, he gives a pretty heart-wrenching performance in this film that, um, again, I haven't really quite seen much like it in other films that he's in. But I think that he's excellent in this film. Everybody else, Kate Blanchett's fantastic. Uh, Gael Garcia Bernal, he's great. He doesn't play a huge role in this film, but 
as the other ones when he's in it um he's quite incredible i forgot to put the damn babble background on i'll do the same for 21 grams i'm such a fucking idiot but the japanese actress in this film that goes by the name of rinku kinkuchi i think is i don't I have no idea how to pronounce that um she plays the main character in the japanese portion of this film she's absolutely incredible in this film and again gives an absolutely heart-wrenching performance in this film and honestly i think the japanese aspect to this film some people say that it's like really forced and, and unnecessary but damn it do i really feel the actual thematic purpose of what's happening and i do feel every ounce of emotion that is explored in that segment and it's it's quite incredible filmmaking in my opinion and the mexican portion of this film can also be really tough to watch at times because it's actually something that's kind of political and human and that's something that i haven't really seen in 92 like really be so obvious with in a lot of his other films but even though the kind of political message that i think he was trying to convey with that aspect it still really worked for me because it's not like it's dishonest. I feel like it's incredibly honest with how it's how it's exploring it. And it's also one of those scenes that um, can really pull tears out of you. But yeah, I really, really love this film. I think it's fantastic. If I had to give it a grade, I'd probably give it a soft 9 out of 10. And I didn't rate the other ones. I guess I should rate those. Uh, Beautiful, I would give probably a soft 8 out of 10. And The Revenant, I would probably also give a soft 9 out of 10. So at number 2 we have... Amores Perros. Amores Perros is a film that I'm extremely excited to come out with on the Criterion Collection. I think it's going to come out on the 18th I believe. I'm not 100% sure but I'm going to try to get a copy of that and if I can't I guess I'll just have to wait till the next sale. I really really love this film obviously. And I think most people agree that in a more objective sense, this is the best in the death trilogy where again, you have multiple different stories happening in different places that eventually kind of either intertwine or relate to each other in some way and usually try to convey some kind of like domino effect and um, explore how one action can affect the other. And obviously this film demonstrates a lot of that beautifully and like pretty much all of his films, it's a very human film. It's really emotional and heart-wrenching film that leads you down a lot of depths of despair. But all of those films, they always have something that is a bit hopeful. And even though there's a lot of depressing things occurring, um, a lot of it does at least like to end on a note that is a little bit more inspiring. And... This film does that beautifully and i also like how each story in this film like it's not scattered in the same way that 21 grams is it's a lot more it's a lot more condensed and it's a lot more contained than that and i like how each one of the stories has their own kind of thematic conveyance to them and their own meaning to them while also not feeling like it's separate from the heart of this film because everything feels incredibly appropriate and nothing feels forced. Everything feels like it's all naturally falling together. And that takes a lot of finesse with both writing and directing. This film is pretty tough to watch. It might be one of the toughest in 92 films to watch. Just because of the dog fighting element that's in this film. And I don't know how we shot all that. I'm, I'm hoping that no actual dogs were hurt in the making of this. But a lot of that looks incredibly believable that I can only wonder. But... Either way, yeah, a lot of that stuff can be kind of hard to sit through and watch. But yeah, either way, I love the human messages in this film, and I just love the overall craft of this film. I think it's really unique, and it's incredibly well put together. And I do think, in a more objective sense, this is the best in the Death Trilogy. Wow, I, I still didn't learn my lesson and change it to the appropriate wallpaper. What's wrong with me? Kind of too late, because I'm pretty much done talking about this film now. But if I had to give this one a grade, I would give it... A very very strong 9 out of 10 this is an incredible film and if you for some reason haven't seen it yet I highly recommend it I'm sure this one is highly available on a lot of different sites please try to check this film out as quickly as you can so y'all already know what the number one film is y'all already know it's Birdman um 
what can I say? I know that's kind of a really obvious choice to pick, but what what what, what, do, what do you want from me? This film is this is the film out of all the films that I've seen from him that I can comfortably say is a masterpiece. Um, everything about this film is quite incredible. I don't really want to talk that much about it because everybody has already talked their heads off in this film, and what's amazing about this film is pretty obvious. But I love everything about this film. I love the central subject of this film and how it explores its themes, obviously regarding um, like the spirit of Hollywood blockbuster filmmaking and the true essence of art. And I love how the main character played by Michael Keaton is essentially just trying to gain respect from, you know, the art community and people who really, really love filmmaking as an art and theater as an art. And he's obviously just sick of being praised as this kind of like, you know, brainless, uh, you know, action hero kind of guy. And he's desperately seeking the respect of people who, again, on a more intellectual level, um, appreciate the essence of art. And I love the way this film explores that. I also love the way that this film um, explores the dynamic between critics and artists. And again, it's almost impossible for me not to get chills down my spine when I'm watching that scene of Michael Keaton just tearing that critic a new asshole. That's just a brilliantly written scene, brilliantly directed scene, beautifully acted scene. That's like one of my favorite Michael Keaton scenes ever. And obviously, we can't talk about this film without talking about his brilliant cinematography. Um, it's obviously some of the best cinematography and directing that I've personally ever seen. Because this film is definitely, it's, its brilliance in the aesthetic is definitely a product of its really delicate and creative direction combined with Lubeski's brilliant camera work. And I just love how fluid this film seems. Everything, obviously it's not really done in one take. It just creates the illusion. But that takes a lot of really delicate direction, camera work, and also really important editing because the editing needs to get a lot more praise. I'm glad, I think it did win an award, so maybe it doesn't need more praise. But um, the editing definitely plays a huge important role into how seamless this film looks. And obviously all of the acting and the characters in this film and how they're written um, is honestly kind of like a stroke of genius. This film in the entirety is kind of genius. But Edward Norton's character is just, I mean, come on, how can you not find that absolutely entertaining and also just brilliant writing? Uh, Edward Norton embodied that character so easily, and it just seems like something that's so natural to him. Um, it just almost seems like, like it's like an extension of who he is in real life. I don't know him personally, but that's kind of what it seemed like. Um, obviously Michael Keaton's fantastic in this film. I don't really need to dive too much into that, but he's amazing. But yeah, Naomi Watts is great. Even Zach Galifianakis is awesome in this film. Who would have thought he would play a huge part in one of the best films ever made? I would never be able to guess that, but he's fantastic in this film as well for the role that he played. Yeah, everything about this film is absolutely fantastic, and I do think that this is a genuine masterpiece. And I remember this being the most satisfying Oscar experience I ever had, because I was in love with this film, but I wasn't so sure if the Academy was actually going to give it the awards and admiration that it deserved. I knew it would get some awards, but to see it essentially sweep the Oscars as it did was probably the last really satisfying Oscar experience that I had. Parasite winning is great, don't get me wrong, but wouldn't it have been awesome if Parasite like swept everything? That's kind of like what I felt with Birdman like sweeping everything because it was it was a really like, almost felt like a religious experience. But either way, those are all of my thoughts on all these films. I'm glad you stuck around to hear my ranking. Well, hopefully you did, I don't know. But, um, I also want to thank Chad for coming up with the idea for this list because when he told me about this list, I definitely wanted to be on board because Inyaritu is a filmmaker that, as I mentioned many, many times, um, is a filmmaker that I really love. One of my favorite contemporary filmmakers and me being half Mexican, it just, it kind of touches my soul. But either way, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give this video a like and share it amongst your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now I wanted to say this. So... In R2, I think, is a filmmaker that I really have a lot of respect with because, as I already mentioned, he's a filmmaker that came right out of the gate with doing ambitious filmmaking. And I think that is something that is very admirable. But what's even more admirable is 
what I already mentioned a little bit earlier, is the fact that he's grown as a filmmaker. He's grown better. He's grown more concise with his characters, his storytelling methods, and just his ability to pace things at uh, such an energetic level to where you feel very in tune with everything that's going on. You feel like the tone matches the storytelling perfectly. And I think that's something that is really admirable with being able to say, because how, how often can you say that? There are so many filmmakers where they reach a point and they're not able to get to that, that level. But arguably speaking, although Birdman was his magnum opus, The Revenant nearly matched that. You know, it's, it's still a great film. So what can I say? In R2, I really like him. I think he's a good filmmaker. Again, I'm looking forward to rewatching Morris Meadows, but he's a good filmmaker. I have a lot of respect for him. And um, yeah, thank you very much again, Carlos, for having me. And um, as always, guys, uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and let me know your ranking list down below. And as always, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and I'll uh, catch you guys later.